Hey fandom, it's me Aaron. And I'm Avengers vs. Tony. And uh, Avengers will win. <laughs> but this is, uh, this is a, a great big week for us. Last week was awesome. Last week we had a lot of fun, had a lot of, um, a lot of spirited debate uh, among homophobes on our YouTube channel. <laughs> and um, a lot of uh, debate from people that are, I don't know what the opposite of a Marvel zombie is, but you know, it was fun. It was cool. And you know, I'll get to that later. That's, that's all good stuff. I love that stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens here in the shop all the time. I, I live and breathe and eat that, you know. I mean, I and I, I defecated out. Uh, yes, yes. Involvement in the community. That's what comics are about. Okay, Swamp Thing came out this week. And oh man, I'm sorry, people know they're not linked up yet per se. I know that I've been talking about this forever, and the writers have been talking about this forever. And I know it's like red and and green, and you know, it, and we're not talking about Halo or whatnot. We're talking about you know the rot and all that. And okay, Swamp Thing, beautiful book, great artist, great stuff. He's finally. Fully Swamp Thing, and it's going amazing. And Animal Man, this is so cool. I, I got every issue of the old Animal Man from Vertigo. I don't remember them ever doing this. Animal vs. Man, that's freaking brilliant. Oh, God. And, you know, this is this is this book is disgustingly sick awesome. Like, it is so good that you don't mind that Swamp Thing and Animal Man haven't linked up yet. Yes, yes. And that's, that's he's doing a great job. Because oh, God, yes. Maybe they leaked it too soon that they were going to, you know, link up and, you know, whatever. But I love this Animal Man. It's my... It and, uh, and Swamp Thing and Aquaman are my favorite books. And this, this is just the best week when I get these both the same week. And if you don't know the joy that is getting both Swamp Thing and Animal Man in the same week and then reading them in tandem, then you don't know comics because this is, this is a treat that DC gives us every week. Um, Ferris number two came out. This, uh, this book is great. It's, yes. you know, it's a great companion to fables. You don't even have to read fables. I have people that are reading, you know, just, we always turn people on to comics because that's what we do here because we're not negative. We don't just, you know, we, we listen. We seek first to understand and then be understood. When someone talks about what they like, you know, we don't just repeat our autobiography like, oh, Clone Wars sucked. I hated Death of Superman. And these two <laughs> things are facts. These are part of my identity. But no, we get them on fables and they're like, what's this Ferris? Can I get this number one? I'm like, thank you, DC. Yes, you can. You can get this number one. Yes. And it has beautiful art by uh, Phil Jimenez. And it's freaking beautiful. Gorgeous. And I don't know how many people are going to get issue two because I ordered like 40 copies issue one, which is weird for a Vertigo book because those all sell so heavy in the collections. I don't know if people are going to buy number one, love it, and say I'm going to wait for the trade. I don't know. But I doubled down. I ordered just the same amount of number two, and we'll see what happens. I don't care. I'll sell it. I don't care. Um, that's all good. Okay, for Marvel. Everyone's telling me this came out last week at all of their stores. I didn't get this last week. Secret Avengers number 24, I did not get this last week. I didn't get it. Uh, but I got it this week, So, um, and if you don't have it, you should get it. It's awesome. Um, if you read issue 23, and now it's a spoiler, because 24, obviously, people said came out last week. So you had to read 23. <laughs> the irredeemable Ant-Man redeemed himself. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. And me being so in tune with Rick Remender like I am with Jeff Johns, I'm going to make a prediction. Okay. He's gonna come back as one of the Adaptoids, like like the grandfather of Human Torch. You Grand heard Day. it here that's, first. That's what I think. That's what I think. I I just know Rick Remender. I know I know that that jolly man, and I, I know about his dingleberries, and I just know how it is. And this is great. Um, and we're this isn't our top books, but Venom is also Rick Remender, and it's also Secret Avengers. He's in the Secret Avengers. There it is on the cover. Get it. Um, Age of Apocalypse. Not Rick Remender, but he did launch this book. It's written by Dave Lapham, who does, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. Mm. He did Crossed. He did Stray Bullets back in the day, winning his Eisners, but most known lately for Crossed. And this is kind of like the boys in the Age of Apocalypse universe. Depowered mutants, so basically like humans, taking out powered people. It's like the boys in the Age of Apocalypse universe. Awesome. If that turns you on, if you want some hyper-violent stuff, get it. Um, here's the most... Um, Sensitive item of the day, the um, heart thread, uh, I don't know. Uh, Jason Aaron is, you know, a personal friend of mine, but I try not to make things all about me anymore. It's hard. But Jason Aaron, um, he's a beautiful man. He wrote that touching, touching tribute to Mike, Triforce Mike, after he died on his uh, jasonaaron.info. And then this issue eight came out, and on the title page it says, dedicated to the memory of Michael Pandell, RIP Triforce Mike. And it's right here. And uh, just it's just so cool that Jason Aaron was one of Mike's favorite writers, one of his heroes, and now he's respecting him in this way. It's just so touching, and um, I hope that if you like this show and you like whatever, you go out and buy this issue and have it, you know, mean something to you. Because, I mean, other than that, it is a good issue. I do like Wolverine the X-Men, and I oh, yeah. do love Jason Aaron. Um, I guess that's it. Was there anything else we are going to talk about this week? 
I don't know. There's. <laughs> All right, screw you guys. Avers X number one. It's out today, Tuesday. We're not pretending like this video is being filmed on Wednesday right now. It's out today, Tuesday. And we're gonna have a party here starting at seven. We can't sell the book to eight. It's gonna be insane. We're gonna have all people in costumes, a costume contest, giving out buttons, and selling this freaking book. And here's the thing. You guys, some of you guys were hating on me and saying that, you know, I just ordered a ton. I, have, I guess I ordered a ton. There's but, um, some truth to that argument, yes. I read it ahead of time because I, I'm freaking them on Bleeding Cool. If I ask for an advanced copy, I get one. I, I cheat the system. I, I get it. And I say, hey, I'm, I'm, hey, this is Aaron, the, the press guy. No, no, I don't know Aaron, the retailer. <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard of him. And then I read it in a like PDF. Man. And then, you know, I loved it. It's fun. And here's the thing. Yes, it's derivative. Basically, it, it, it's exactly, I know what you're thinking. It's exactly like Israel and Palestine. But, you know, here's the thing. Yes, it's like Civil War. Yes, it is. And Civil War I loved. But it's also like Secret War. This is the thing with Marvel. Marvel crossovers only work, in my opinion, when you get all the heroes together and come up with some contrived reason for them to punch each other in the face. All the way back to Civil War. Everything. House of M, all right. Uh, Scarlet Go Witch goes insane. Everyone has different backstories and they all punch each other in the face. All Hooray. right. Um, Fear itself. These weird new hammers come, some heroes get them, everyone punches themselves in the face. Uh, Civil War, obviously, they're fighting over politics, everyone punches themselves in the face. This isn't politics, this is the other you know, thing you're not supposed to talk about, religion. This is religion. People are all like, why are they fighting? I thought they were friends. They fight over what friends always fight over, religion. It's true. Cyclops is insane, I'm sorry, he is insane. He thinks the Phoenix Force is his destiny. He thinks that's his messiah, he thinks that the Phoenix Force probably talks to him. He thinks it's like the Holy Spirit of flaming birds, all right? And he thinks it's <laughs> going to come down from the heavens, and they're going to have like a thousand years of good luck, and, you know, that's like his rapture or something. And all the evil mutant bigots are going to go away, and the Phoenix is going to save them. And he thinks that the Phoenix Force has always been attracted to them because it's their destiny. And they were just kids back then when Gene died and got corrupted. Now, yeah. that, they're, now that they're adults, they can handle it. Absolutely. And um, Captain America is very level-headed, and Obama asked him to go get that hope chick that the force is going to go into and also send a team out to stop the force because it's kind of like Galactus. It's this crazy force coming to Earth that's going to maybe destroy Earth. And so they fight. It's awesome. And Wolverine's in the middle because Wolverine is a mutant. He respects Cap. He is a mutant. He doesn't want hope to be, you know, he, he, he so likes a, hope. He's a kid from a religious family being forced into a secular world and having to make a choice where to live. That is true. So, you know, if I know a lot of people are comic snobs, and I'm kind of like that too, you know, because I, I love Saga, I love that, all that stuff. And, it, you know, I have to make the, the Frosted Mini Wheats analogy, <laughs> okay? So, you know, the fiber side of me is like, I've read this before, this is all too colorful, there's too much spandex, I'll let the, screw this Man. stuff, I, I just want the indie stuff, you know, Marvel's just trying to rip me off. But then you flip it over in the frosted side, and I'm just getting a little kid mode. I'm like, oh my god, I'm 12 years old, and I know exactly what this is. This is awesome. I want this. And it, that's what I want. I want this. Why can't I have this guilty pleasure? And I'm saying, with all honesty and passion, this it, is fun. Indulge your guilty pleasures. Buy AVX. It's fun. I'm sorry. So, I'll still promote all the, the snobby, snooty stuff and love that stuff. But I have that frosted side, and I'm going to flip over and, and turn into that. So come so, indulge your frosted side, party here tonight, I'll be drawing stuff on sketch covers. You want that. Yeah, you want that. You want that. Thanks guys, and you know, talk a bunch of crap about us on uh, Bleeding Cool and YouTube. It gets us more subscribers. Bitch Thanks, it out. Bye. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>